Hello and welcome back to Europe 1100, and I've been waiting, yes, I've been waiting off-screen for a pretty long time. I'm actually not entirely sure how long it's been, uh, but one of our children aged up in the meantime, and um, he is now age 11, I believe. Anyway, we have a war declaration on our hands, yes. I actually ended up making peace with the Byzantines because I didn't want to deal with them any further. You know, I kind of just wanted to see what would happen if we allowed ourselves to fall into peacetime. And so what I did was I just went on my merry way and I came back to my own territory. I went to Ancona, of course. I also ended up making a companion, a vassal. And he is Yuha the Falcon. He was previously a caravan runner for me. And he has pretty good stats as a result of that. Anyway, hopefully he's going to do a good job of running Venezia. I've given him that. And other than that, we can now make our way over to our enemy's territory. And hopefully we're going to do a good job there. Anyway. We have uh, a little bit of supplies to get, I suppose. And um, yeah, actually what I wanted to do was smelt a whole bunch of these Pugios and then just basically sell things over and over again to uh, get rid of things in my inventory. Because, don't know whether you've seen that, but I have a lot of things in my inventory at the moment. Yes, I do. Yeah, but that is that's the thing. That's mostly food. I believe, as you can see, I have 539 grain. I should probably sell some of this grain and get some fish instead. So it's a little bit more even. And uh, I've been attempting to try and get a, a slightly better balance so that my morale is a bit higher. Because even though morale is not really going to make that much difference in the long run, because, of course, if we enter battles, then morale is going to get taken care of automatically. But it's always nice to have it just in case something were to happen before you win a battle. You never know. Okay, what about this guy? I think we can actually ask him to potentially join us. Yes, this is the fellow that we failed to persuade beforehand. And you can see here, 19% chance. No. As you can see, this is the same exact thing that happened before where I got a critical fail with this guy once once, once again. So that in, in general is hilarious. Because <laughs> that just, you know, goes to show... Seems like me waiting an exceptional amount of time still makes no difference whatsoever. Because uh, someone actually mentioned, which I really appreciate, by the way, and you've done some testing as well by the, by the sound of things. So I very much appreciate your input. Basically, you said something along the lines of, it appears as though the AI recalculates persuasion percentage chances every single day or every single time you enter a fief because obviously that's the case for the encyclopedia as well so for example the encyclopedia gets updated whenever you go into a fief or until the player goes into a fief uh, like a village or a castle or whatever and so that's actually pretty useful in other words you can force them to reevaluate their persuasion check but unfortunately as you can see right here it didn't help me unfortunately <laughs> <laughs> it didn't help me at all, which I, I got to say, I'm quite disappointed by. Anyway, we're going to be making our way over to this castle here, if we can. Bear in mind that they declared war on us, by the way. John II declared war on us. What is Mengus doing right now? Okay, wait a minute. Where is he going? Ah, he's defending Belgrade. Ah, okay, that's absolutely fine then. Good work. So, oh, oh, he has an army of 1,700. He has an army of 1,700. Can you believe it? All right. Well, good luck, sir. I'm sure he's going to do an absolutely fantastic job. Here's Elias over here. Let's actually see if we can do battle with him. I'm running around with basically zero units right now. Well, not zero units, but I don't have an army to speak of. That's what I mean when I say that. As I would like, if at all possible, to be able to catch up to enemies and attack them. And you can see here that my speed is only hampered by my prisoners and a little bit by my cargo, but nothing nothing really too terrible. Anyway, we're just going to be attempting to build our trebuchets as fast as possible. Maybe Mengus is actually going to come over here and help me out once he's done defending. I think he's going to be... Yes, as you can see, there he is. That trebuchet got destroyed. And here's Mengus. Whoa, okay. We are going to have an absolutely fantastic time now. Let's just make every every single one of these things wow super easy actually 
Oh yeah, super easy when you get a huge amount of vassals to join you. It seems like we are actually losing quite a few of our people in the process here. So I'm not that big a fan of it, but we're going to have to just go in and then we'll see what the status is after we have exited the siege. Because that's the thing. I kind of want to make sure that we are on the offensive push. Because if we obviously don't, you know, attempt to take anything, then we're going to be remaining stack static and stagnant and it's just not really going to be progressing at all which of course is a little bit counterintuitive because of course what we want to do is we want to eliminate them or we want to do something along those lines personally i uh, i believe our faction has a combat strength at the moment of around 12,000, and that's pretty good in my opinion i feel like that's pretty good Obviously, that is not amazing. I think the Holy Roman Empire has more, I, I think. Um, I'm not entirely sure about that, actually, so don't quote me on it. But I think they have a little bit more than that. But that just goes to show that a, a, a large faction such as the Holy Roman Empire, they are basically on even keel with us right now. They are very much on an even combat strength. So that means that if we are able to just increase our you know, increase our influence just that little bit more, we might actually find ourselves at the forefront of the faction power game, basically. So, you know, we want to be as powerful as possible, of course. Um, but apart from that, obviously, we have to consider that if we are, and this is a, big, a pretty big deal here, if we are able to defeat the Holy Roman Empire or capture a majority of it and convert it to our side uh, we probably won't have any issues winning the game that's basically what it, what it's coming down to right there so how it how it's going to be is if i am able to completely defeat or uh, shall we say capture quite a significant portion of the holy roman empire that will basically be a game over situation and a victory for us because, you know, th there's nothing that can stop us at that point, in my opinion. So it looks as though we are actually getting pretty close to the finishing line, surprisingly enough. I wouldn't have expected it so soon, but obviously the Holy Roman Empire and the Byzantines, they, they forced the issue. They forced the issue by declaring war against us after we traded for those thieves. And there you go. That, <laughs> that's all that's really happening. Anyway, there you go. My, my forces were able to completely dominate. And we are now ready to move on. We didn't even have to go into the to the keep itself, which is absolutely fantastic. I love doing that. Don't really um, don't really appreciate going into the keep. We still have 92 prisoners, but you can see here I've been waiting for a significant amount of time because I have 58 of them ready to get converted, which is just crazy. All right, so we managed to take this. Let's show mercy once again. And whoa, yeah, some of these people really do not like what I'm doing here, but I have a significant amount of influence. So even if, even if I have to, I can donate some influence to them and gain some um, relation relatively fast and easily. So we shouldn't have to worry about that too much at all. Anyway, uh, there's a bunch of things that are being built here. I'm just going to allow that to happen. I don't see a problem with it. And let's take a look at the map because I don't really, <laughs> this is kind of the reason why I wanted to make additional vassals, but not for them to run around in one singular army. Um, I kind of wanted to have a slightly wider presence in the, in the world, but that is not happening, unfortunately. It feels to me like they're, um, <laughs> they're all just ganging up in this really, really big army, which is good. Don't get me wrong. I think that's actually really good because it, it means that they're able to take things super, super fast. But on the flip side, they are very immobile and it's going to be a bit difficult for them to react to things. Anyway, uh, what we're going to do is going to go for make a difference here. Plus 100% battle morale to troops when you kill an enemy in battle. And a plus 10% shared experience for archers. The other things are good, but we are not going to need battle morale at all, in my opinion. Because uh, we're going to obviously always be... Attacking enemies relatively easily. Oh, wait, wait, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Can, can I actually... F uh, oh, wait a minute. Um, no, he's not the leader. Okay, never mind. I was going to say, can I actually persuade that guy? No. Uh, the answer is no. Very, very clearly. 
Anyway, there we go. We can now move on. This guy, I don't even know why I'm bothering looting him, to be honest, but there you go. All right, so let's have a look, see at what's going on here. I'd like to try and see if we can fight them. Oh, never mind. He got absolutely murdered. He ran into Megas' uh, army. That is quite funny. And yeah, otherwise, ah, hello. Are you going to do something, sir? Are you just waiting at the village? This is a weird fellow, isn't it? Yeah, this guy is really, really strange. Okay, so we're just going to give this to Mengus. As you can see, he's actually on the ticket now. Maybe it took a little bit of time for the game to sort of update and, and kind of recognize Mengus's greatness. Because apparently that is exactly what's happening here. Anyway, as you can see, he has 6,000 influence. Just purely because he was able to do so much. It's actually crazy. All right, well, let's have a look here. Who actually doesn't really like me that much? These guys? No, no, these fellows. These fellows don't like me that much. So we're just going to support him quite a bit. As you can see, we're going to gain a massive amount of relation. I really love that mod, by the way, that removes the little pop-up window that comes up to indicate that you've just given, uh, or shall we say, just had your relation increase. Uh, highly recommend that, by the way. If you're not, If you're not someone that really cares too much about mods that fundamentally change the gameplay experience, but just someone that is um, looking for you know, basic quality of life improvements that are not really going to, as I say, affect gameplay too much, then I'd highly recommend no relation because it's such... If you're like me and you get irritated with that pop-up thing happening, well, look no further because that's absolutely fantastic. It's a crazy, crazy good mod. Otherwise, let's have a look here. No, he's he's fully 100. Okay, so that's perfectly fine. Let's, let's continue onward. Okay, um, so now... Where is Mingus actually going? Oh, he's going deep. Okay, wow, he's actually Okay, yeah, you know what? I'm going to I'm going to let him do his thing. I'm going to let him do his thing because what I want to do is I actually want to besiege something myself too. I'm going to see if I can maybe take Bucharest. Maybe I can maybe I can do that. Um, but I don't want to start the siege before he's there because I feel as though he's probably going to change his plans and try to assist us. And I don't really want him to do that. I think that's going to be a huge waste of his time. And look at me basically being like, oh yes, I don't want to waste the AI's time. I would like to be polite with the AI because otherwise he's going to, well, not do anything. He's, he's, <laughs> I basically just want him to do his thing because I think he's more useful where he is rather than assisting me. Even though assisting me is actually really nice of him. And I'm very surprised that he's actually doing that so proactively. But, you know, who am I to say? I actually just appreciate his, his efforts, to be honest. Anyway, let's just move these guys over here. Move the cavalry over there. We're going to have to be a little bit careful here because there is a river. So it's going to be a bit, bit restrictive, potentially. So let's just put these guys into a loose formation. And, hmm, we might be able to actually go a little bit closer here, which I wouldn't mind too badly. So let's actually just go over here and go here. There we go. Move them like so. We've got some horse archers as well. I'm thinking we're just going to actually put those guys into an auto-delegate situation. They're going to be very, very difficult to dislodge in general, so we shouldn't have too many issues with that. Just take out those guys' two horses. I wasn't actually planning on killing them themselves, because killing the horse is much, much easier, and it doesn't put me at so much of a risk. <laughs> okay, well, if he's going to run into me, then I'll, I'll definitely take that. Sure, why not? That seems like a pretty... Um, <laughs> pretty easy uh, pretty easy kill right there. Okay, so let's take these guys over here a little bit more. As you can see, the enemy has actually moved slightly inland, which is really making a huge difference for us right now. My archers are getting kills, which I am very, very pleased about too. Let's get these guys over there. Oh, this is going to be an incredible, incredible... I, I'm not entirely sure why some of our horse archers are just charging in there. That's That's a little bit misconceived, but okay. Uh, yeah, okay, so we're going to just tell these guys from down below to charge in. And then we're going to charge in the other fellows. We're going to do this not at the same time, but at different times. And we're just going to do this, get our, our uh, infantry charging in, obviously. And then we're going to get these guys charging in now as well, because we're driving them. You see the archers? We were actually having them run towards our other cavalry. And now we can slam into the back and hopefully deal massive damage there too. So that's really going to make a huge difference, hopefully. Although, to be fair, I don't think we're even going to have any issues at all because this this tactic that we've just used here, it's a classic, you know? It's an absolute classic. It's just, you know, 
It's only it's only doable because we have so many cavalry as well. And it's very, very useful that we have so many and that we split them, actually. So that's nice. And, I mean, you can see quite clearly how easy this was. I mean, my archers are still getting kills even now. And there it is. That is indeed a victory. How many did we lose? One. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yep. That's kind of how it goes. Obviously, we did outnumber them, didn't we? I think we did outnumber them by uh, by a pretty significant amount. But do I care? No, not really. Because you know we've 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 got them we've got them dead to rights basically, which is really nice. So we don't have to really worry too much about them now. And now we can just move on. All right. Okay. So we still have a bunch of prisoners. And oh yeah, I should actually have um. You know, leveled some people up. I think that makes the most sense, doesn't it? Okay, let's, let's get some of these, get some of those. There we are. We've got some militia, do we? I, I'm not entirely sure if we have some militia, but yes. Anyway, he is now besieging that. He should be able to take it relatively fast, hopefully fast. And apart from that, we're going to go over to Bucharest, like I said before, and we will try to take it. It doesn't seem like there are any other vassals in and around this area. Okay, so let's try to besiege it. Obviously, I don't have any of the other vassals with me right now, so my um, crafting building speed is relatively slow. As you can see, he actually took it. Wow. Okay, really impressed with him, actually. Super, super impressed with him. And I'm actually wondering, uh, who's going to be the who's going to be the person? What, me? They want me to have it? Okay, well, that's rather funny. Uh, I'm actually not entirely sure whether I should take it, to be honest. Because if I end up taking this, I could give it to a new vassal. And I think that might be quite useful. So I think that's what we're going to do. I'm going to give it to myself. And then uh, oh, we do have a couple of people actually voting for me right here as well. Dalaset actually voted me for, for me too. That's very nice of her, isn't it? All right. Well, whatever the case... We could always give it to Yuha as well, because he is indeed a new vassal, and he only has one fief to his name, so it might actually make sense for us to give it to him. And we have a birthday that's come up as well. Let me actually just get rid of some of these notifications. I'm sure that's been annoying some of you. Sorry about that. Anyway, ah, yes, we also had a child very, very recently, as you uh, may or may not have realized or guessed or, or known about. Not entirely sure whether you did. Anyway, point is... Um, they've now aged up to age two, which is quite nice. Let's go for vigor, vigor, vigor. Yeah, yeah, that's what we want. All right, fantastic. So let's see what we got going on here. Okay, so we've got four. Very nice. Let's get these guys out here. Mengus is probably going to come this way. I'm not really wanting him to. But let's see what happens here. Hopefully we'll be able to take down the walls relatively fast. The food situation in here is looking quite good for them. Ah, Mengus is actually here. I am so surprised. Look at his banner. Is it just me or does his banner look super... Like, I, I, I don't know. It just looks really war-torn and, and intimidating, you know? That's what it looks like to me right now. Okay, yeah, so... <laughs> we have... 2,000 troops. Yes. 2,000 troops, thanks to Mengus. I, I don't even know. I don't even know. I never thought I would say the word Mengus this many times in a row. Uh, but there you go. That's what's happening right now. And uh, I guess we'll just go straight on in and we'll see what happens. I, uh, I don't actually know whether we should... I think we should just try to get through here. Can I go up the... Oh, I can't go up the stairs with my horse. Of course I can't. Uh, what a what a stupid question, hey? <laughs> Alright, yeah, let's not do that. Let's go around the side instead. These guys have thrown weapons, or do they? No, no, they, they have mostly archers. They have mostly archers, okay. So, can I actually get up there? I think I can. Alright, so let's let's do this the smart, smart way. Because obviously, we don't want to get ourselves eliminated. So I'm just going to try to use this, and then this, uh, yeah, no, there we go. We learned this the last time we were here, and this basically means that I can hopefully do something. Oh, come on, don't get shot, don't get shot. No, don't don't run away, sir. Oh, no, he, he literally just outplayed me right there, just because I was so incredibly bad at hitting the overhead, but there you go. Okay, two kills. Hmm, that is not exactly what I was anticipating, considering my forces are completely invading this space from, I don't even know, out of nowhere. They're, uh, they're really pulling out all the stops. 
Okay, can I? Yes, there we go. Yeah. Oh, look at this. We're actually fighting in the streets. This is this is unheard of. Usually, the enemy is completely eliminated in the courtyard because, you know, let's face it, the enemy is going to be pushing the opponent back. In 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 our case, obviously, I am the opponent here. But um, yeah, usually they would push the enemy back, and then they would con consistently fight in the courtyard. But because we are just pushing them so incredibly fast into the depths of the town, we're fighting in the streets themselves, which is actually incredible, because that's, that's usually not what you get, at least from my experience. So that just goes to show, <laughs> having 2,000 units really makes a huge difference. Who would have expected that, he states, obviously. Yeah, it's very nice indeed. Oh well, never mind. We can get some pretty decent kills here, at least. As you can see, wow, actually pretty good. Yeah, I like this. I like this polearm. I like this polearm quite a bit. I gotta say, maybe it's not as fun for me as a two-handed. I gotta say that. I think the greatest thing that we can take away from using polearms is actually using polearms on the field of battle. And using one that is much, much longer than you might expect to be useful in a siege, for example. I think that that is probably the way to go. I don't think that it's... I don't think it's very... I mean, it is viable. It is viable, but I don't think it is as effective as using a two-handed sword, for example. Um, in a uh, sort of infantry, you know, foot combat situation. Uh, so, yeah. I, I personally think that a two-handed is definitely going to be my preference if I'm going to be doing that. Where did this guy go? Where where was this? Where was the last enemy? Look at that. He, he seems to be, a, you know, I don't know, running all the way to the edge of the battlefield or something like that to try and retreat, which is actually hilarious. All right, so let's take a look here. We've got 51 enemies to deal with. That shouldn't be too bad. Nice little auto resolve to get that finished. And uh, yeah, we are just. We are just taking thieves left, right, left, right, and center, and that's the that's the funny thing. Can they do anything to stop us at this point? I am thinking probably not. They probably want to make peace with us very, very soon, um, and I'm thinking that maybe we'll give it to them because, I mean, what are they supposed to do otherwise? I mean, that's the funny thing. Do I do I care if they declare war or if they declare war on us in the future? Yes, I probably do. Don't I? But that's the thing. Um, this one is actually being taken uh, back, which is not exactly great. Okay, they could, but ooh, I could, I could potentially give it to myself again, or I could give it to someone else. Could give it to this guy potentially, maybe. Mm, if I give it to this fellow, he's gonna have three things, which I think is pretty decent. So we'll just give it to him. I could give it to myself, as I said, and then give it to someone else. You know, so. I could make it um, somewhat useful in that regard. I don't know. Maybe it would have been a better idea to do that. Okay, so let's have a look at my thieves right quick. Because, let's see. Okay, so this is mine. Oh, this is currently being taken. Ah, yes. Okay, so me gifting it right now is probably going to be kind of useless. Uh, oh, Radan actually has an army as well. Oh, that's very nice for you to, to be there, sir. Because Mengus is obviously doing his thing. He's doing everything he can. Uh, yeah, this is definitely going to get taken. Almost a certainty, I'm pretty sure. And uh, Roger was actually taken prisoner once again. What is up with Roger? I don't know what's going on with him. Anyway, let's have a look here. Oh, uh, yeah, so he he's on the docket. Okay, uh, yeah, she has a significant amount of things. I actually don't know who to give this to. I'm going to give it to Dalaset just because I, I like her. I think she's... She's going to be quite loyal to us, whereas the others, I'm, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm not sure if I can really trust them that much, but I've given them significant thieves as it is. Oh, look at that. He actually destroyed them before they were able to take the thief, which is amazing. That is really, really cool. All right, so do we actually have any food in here? Yeah, they do have some food in here, so I should be able to purchase a little bit of foodstuffs. And, okay. Let's see. Okay, what were should I buy all of it? That's really bad, isn't it? Yeah, me buying all of this food is really, really bad for the loyalty, I think. Oh, well. Never mind. Radan is fielding 283. I'm kind of surprised, actually, that he's fielding such a small slash large army. I don't, I'm not entirely sure. Maybe it should be a bit larger, but oh, well. All I can say is that I hope he doesn't come over here and help me out, because uh, 
the uh, the other uh, the other thief that he just took has just come under siege, and I'm hopeful that he's defending it. It doesn't seem like he's defending it actually, so I'm a little bit worried about it now. Uh, but oh oh oh, he, he was taking Athens. He was taking Athens. Okay, what a beast. I I, I you know what? I I'm just gonna stop questioning him. Okay. I'm going to stop questioning him and his um, his motives because he's quite clearly having a much greater idea as to what he should be doing. So, pretty happy with that. Why not? <laughs> Why not? Let's just let him do his thing. Uh, you know, in in uh, in Mengus we trust, right? In Mengus we trust. Apparently, that is exactly the uh, that's the catchphrase of the latter portion of this series for some reason. Who would have expected him to be to become such an amazing leader? when we initially recruited him, because I was literally just getting random companions just to run my, my caravans, and well, lo and behold, look at what has happened. He's just an absolute amazing fellow who seems to be doing an incredible job. All right, so I'm just going to continue be, you know, giving this to Dalaset, I guess. She's probably going to do a better job than either of these guys. And um, yeah, we can just continue to starve these fellows out. We're going to just make sure that the garrison is... Completely gone. Ah, they want a peace agreement. Okay, yeah, that's that's not surprising, is it? <laughs> we have just completely obliterated them in almost every single aspect. Let's just destroy that catapult real fast, and then we'll just move all of this to the reserves, and then we'll go in. I don't really want to go in at night, but I also just want to get this, you know, get this captured before we make peace, because I'm thinking we'll probably make peace after this. And uh, we'll see what happens with it. Okay, now let me see here. Oh yeah, so this wonderful texture. Have you seen this? I don't know whether you've seen this before, but there, there is this texture here that I, I assume is a different color because that is the thing that attaches the wall that destroys itself, you know, due to the destruction of the trebuchet. Um, and the, uh, yeah, that's the, the sort of like thing that connects it to the other wall. It's kind of weird. I, you know, I'm not a game developer, so I don't know the actual term for it, but yeah, that's pretty, I think that's pretty funny. But, uh, yeah, anyway, wow, these, these guys are actually fighting us outside the walls? How audacious of them. Look at this guy. What, what, how are they, why are they doing that? That is crazy. I wouldn't have expected they would do that in a million years. I would have expected them to just hide in the walls because who in their right mind is going to think yes I must go and charge outside and well I don't know fight in open warfare when we're outnumbering them I think we are outnumbering them right and they're mostly um, they're mostly militia oh yeah now that now now look what they've done now they're retreating back into the walls that is exactly what's happening here all right let's do this <laughs> well, that was ill-advised, wasn't it? Yeah, that was hugely ill-advised. Definitely shouldn't have done that. But I'm actually wondering, where are my forces? Why are my forces running away right now? Are they lit? Oh, yeah, it's because they went back into the uh, auto delegate, um, <laughs> in the into the auto delegate mode instead of the uh, full charge. Because I obviously told them to full charge while, while I was alive, and they go back to the um, the default orders after that. But oh well, never mind. Not that big a deal because we were able to achieve victory there. This is going to be the final thief we take from the Byzantines. I think we're probably going to move on after this and probably try, if we can, in upcoming episodes to fight against the Holy Roman Empire. I think that's probably going to be the one that we will try to deal with because the Byzantines are done, in my opinion. They are pretty much done. I don't think that they have anything that can really... Um, face up to us right now so let's actually just take a quick look let's let's have a look and see 
what the actual status of the empire actually is. And then we'll see what we want to do. Okay, wait a minute. Okay, so we take it. Oh, Mengus is taking another town. What? Okay, do you think he can take all of them? Because I can't, I can't take these as fast as he is. Okay, are we having a uh, rebel situation? I'm not entirely sure. N no, no, that's no. There isn't a rebel situation. It is actually just Zoros of the Zoros clan. Okay, I'm not entirely sure who that is, but yes. Uh, making peace with the Byzant... Okay, they want us to make peace. I'm actually not going to make peace just yet. Um, I'm going to give this... Uh, I don't really care about this, actually. I'm going to just give this to this fellow. It, it's just a castle, so it shouldn't be too bad to take back if they do decide to defect from us or something like that. Uh, do we want to make peace with them? Well, uh, no. Uh, Mengus actually wants to make peace? He does. I have to spend a thousand influence to say no. Hmm. Okay, fine, fine. Let's make peace, why not? I was actually going to wait until he took that town because he was currently in a siege. Um, but because he's saying, hey, you know what? We should just make peace. I'm thinking, you know what? Maybe we should. Should we just cut our losses kind of thing? Because as you can see, they have, what? Two towns remaining. That's pretty much it. And their overall combat strength has just completely plummeted to the ground. And you can see that. Look at that. Their combat strength is 3,100. Uh, 3, and you can see here that they're paying 2,400 as tribute. So that's absolutely fantastic. We are, all, we are also getting 400 tribute per day from Kingdom of Sicily. But hilariously enough, um, I, I don't know how they're getting that money, to be honest. Um, they, they've got to be going into the red or something like that. I'm not entirely sure. But yes, here's the Holy Roman Empire. As you can see, they have 14,000. But... You gotta bear in mind, we are now at peace. And that means that we can build up our forces and we can see what we can do in the next episode. I thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.